Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa rasulillah. So, it's been enough time passed and I wanted to comment on uh, something. And it's related to a video I made the other day and uh, a post that I had wrote about this thing called performative Islam. And in particular, I wanted to write about and speak about um, something that I noticed with two figures that have been in, I guess you could say, popular Muslim conscious. And that is both Andrew Tate again, but also our sister Sinead O'Connor, who recently passed away, may Allah have mercy on them. And so, why am I bringing these two up? Because I believe that once again, this is an example of what I spoke of, of the need of some Muslims to live vicariously uh, through some other Muslim's actions. And so, what we find is that uh, some Muslims are going to look to what Andrew Tate does, and they're going to say, wow, you know, like, he's, he just got out of prison, and uh, he said the first thing he's going to do is uh, he's going to go to the masjid, mashallah. Oh, well, yeah, alhamdulillah, that's great. But why are Muslims going down this rabbit hole of always looking to find a way to prop up Islam or to authenticate Islam or to make Islam look good, or I guess make Muslims look good, by the actions of some people that have notoriety. And this is really something that's gonna bite us in the butt, because take somebody like Tate, that yes, he's a new Muslim, yes, uh, he's still got a long ways to go in his Islam, and yet our community is actually, instead of encouraging them to like, hey, just go to the masjid, sit down and learn, and just focus on your Islam and try to get close to Allah with this whole ordeal that you've been through with accusations of sex trafficking and whatnot. You know, why don't you just go back and do that? No, we've got to say, wow, look, this is such a great example. He just got out of uh, house arrest and now he's going to go to the masjid. Look at how wonderful the Islam is. You know, the real danger with this kind of thing is that if, let's say, our brother happens to make another mistake, do we then distance ourselves from him because now that doesn't make Islam or Muslims look good? That's a very precarious situation. So th that was one of the things that I saw. And it's funny, it's like as soon as that happened, I saw particularly people that like to put themselves forth as uh, what we call a dayat or you know, a person that is uh, calling people to Islam. Well, if you want to call people to Islam, just simply call them to the truths of Islam. Don't call people to Islam or don't try to bolster the iman of Muslims by the actions of a few, but rather just teach the book of Allah and the sunnah of the prophet. And ironically, this is from people who are always, you know, like their whole mantra is Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, and yet they themselves have become wrapped up in this kind of, you know, performative Islam cult of personality. So that was one related to uh, our, our brother Andrew Tate. Now, as it relates to our sister, there was an interesting article that was put out, uh, I think, by her manager, and he spoke about how. You know, she's somebody that, that, that had a pretty tough life, that she had many different emotional issues, and, and that the one thing that seemed to work for her was Islam. And he was like, you know, I don't even really, I'm not a very religious person, and Islam doesn't appeal to me, but, you know, uh, clearly it worked for her, so I have to give credit where credit is due. And then people were, you know, posting about how, you know, her converting to Islam, uh, got her to sing again. And I think that was one of the points that the individual made in the article that, you know, Islam was so great that it was able to to get Sinead to, to sing again. And some Muslims were also, you know, forwarding and putting this around. Now, she was obviously a very talented musician, um, but again, even under the most liberal interpretation uh, a scholastic interpretation 
of music, of which I've been planning to do a piece, for instance, on Imam Ashokani's uh, Itbal. Uh, Imam Ashokani, a great scholar uh, of Islam, whose tafsir I actually teach on Saturdays, he wrote a small piece discussing uh, whether or not uh, it's legitimate to say that music full stop is haram, of which basically you can guess from the title, all right, if thought that there's no legitimacy for saying this as a lufal mutra, like as a just completely uh, blank statement, an unconditional statement, that's not acceptable. That being said, I am not aware of any legitimate scholastic engagement of the topic of music that would legitimize a woman singing publicly and performing. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because once again, I don't feel like people are really like, you know, when Sinead became Muslim, and I'm sure there will be some exceptions, but we're talking about the rule, is that I feel like, particularly for many born Muslims, it's a way not to be happy, like, wow, mashallah, here's somebody that Allah has guided uh, to Islam. This is somebody that has accepted the truth of Islam. And so, inshallah, if they die upon this, that they will be able to go to paradise. I don't think most people are thinking that. It's a way for them to feel good about themselves or to legitimate uh, themselves, particularly in a for those Muslims that are living in predominantly non-Muslim societies and countries. And so, this once again just kind of makes conversion or becoming Muslim, I don't really like that term, but this, this makes kind of becoming Muslim almost like a kind of caricature. And so people were hooting out about, about, about that, and yet I, I feel like it, it was clear that our sister, again, may Allah have mercy on her, is somebody that really had deep, deep problems and struggles. I know that uh, the passing of her son was a major, major thing for her, and so I, I don't like it when we use uh, people's becoming Muslim uh, as a plaything to almost have a kind of proxy war, you know, either with certain type of establishment thinking. And so Muslims, again, going back particularly to our sister, that they will say, wow, look at, you know, she was on stage and she was singing in hijab. This is a slam. Uh, no, that is... You know, that is a Muslim. That is a Muslim. But that's not a slam. And this is almost, it really shows the effect of Orientalist ideology and scholarship, how it has trickled down into the modern Muslim mindset, in which so many Muslims think uh, uh, in a kind of essentialist nature that whatever Muslims do is, is Islam. Uh, and that when Allah said, Al yom akmanzulakum dinakum, that on this day I've perfected and completed your religion for you, and that, right, that we're not going to find within that a woman singing publicly. And, you know, this is not to speak ill of the dead. I'm actually not criticizing our sister here. What I'm criticizing is the fact that this is obviously a, 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 an action that is not uh, sanctioned by the religion and therefore shouldn't you know beyond whether it's you know uh it's halalness or haramness or makruhness right whether it's permissibility impermissibility disliked and so on and so on is that one that that is not emblematic of islam this is why i do feel like you know that's why i've been, been you know i started a new class of which we've been reading uh the the book of iman from sahih muslim in which, you know, we started off on the, the, that foundational idea of what is Islam. What, what, what? Al-Iman, what Islam? <clears throat> what Ihsan? That our deen is, is, as was taught to us by Jibreel alayhi salam, has these three major components. That it is what? It is having secure faith in Allah and being satisfied with whatever that, that uh, uh, those things that we have to believe in, that we're satisfied that, that Islam is... Uh, it is what, as we know, the establishment of the prayer and paying the zakat and hajj and Ramadan, and, right? And then what it said, and that none of what she's doing by singing on stage, that is not, that is not any of those three things. You will not find an acceptable 
uh, opinion of any serious scholar that's going to say, yeah, sure, a woman singing publicly on stage is something that is even mubah, not even that is neutral. And yet Muslims, again, I get out of this thirst to demonstrate how wonderful, you know, Islam is. Islam is so great that a, a non-Muslim European woman can embrace the deen and then she can sing publicly. Somehow that is a testimony of the greatness of Islam. Uh, not the fact that if somebody uh, that came from her background that could go through the trauma that she experienced, uh, all of the things that she that she knew, and yet could look and find meaning in the Quran, could identify with its message. As she said, you know, I read the second chapter of the Quran, and like this was me. How many of us say that when I look to the Quran, I find an affirmation? of who I am, or how many of us already think, well, I don't need affirmation of who I am because, well, I'm already Muslim and my culture is Islam, and, and therefore those things are already put beyond uh, the, 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 the possibility of questioning. So I, I think this is a very dangerous path for us to go, whether it is, you know, Andrew Tate uh, getting out of prison or house arrest and going to the masjid, and this is so great, this is a proof of how wonderful Islam is, versus, you know, leave this man alone. Let him work out his demons, let him work on his Islam. Stop making your Islam so reliant upon of what of no, uh, a couple of noteworthy uh, uh, people that embrace their religion. Stop making that the asset test of Islam in your life. Rather, get about the business of worshiping Allah yourself. I really think that this is dangerous because what will inevitably happen with these kinds of things is that those are, those are ordinary people. They might be famous, but at the end of the day, they're ordinary people. What does that mean? They could make a mistake. They could commit a sin. They could utter something that is contrary to Islam. Uh, and then, of course, doing so with the amplifying power of their celebrity. Well, how are you going to reconcile that? Especially if 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 we put this forward to the younger Muslims as wow, this is such a great example of a wonderful Muslim. But then they make a, a, a they make mistakes. One, we need to allow people to be able to make their mistakes without having to do it all on stage. Um, or if they do things, we also should be able to, you know, say to people like, hey, you know what? And again, this will incite a lot of people. But as a woman, it is not appropriate for a woman, and it's not about whether you're in hijab or not, it's not appropriate for a woman to sing in public like that. It's just simply not appropriate. And anybody that has an issue with this has really an issue with the Sunnah of the Prophet that gave clear warnings about this kind of thing. Now, people will do things that are not perfect. And this is my whole point. Okay, in Islam, a woman should not sing on stage. This is what she chose to do. Okay, fine. Then she's doing something. Uh, and by fine, what I mean is she's doing something that is not optimal, that is not ideal. And that uh, could be potentially sinful, major, minor, right? In this case, you know, more minor, but we should not be putting these people forward as, uh, and, and, uh, and again, to their defense, I, none of these people, whether we're looking at Andrew Tate or whether we're looking at Sinead O'Connor, none of them seem to be wanting to be this kind of role model Muslim. They're just trying to figure out how to live their lives I feel that definitely in the case of our uh, beloved sister who passed away, may Allah have mercy on her. I don't know Mr. Tate, but you know, these people are just to their defense. They're not trying to put themselves in this position. It's us that are doing it. And I think that this only leads to the performative Islam, right? This only leads to, to this. Uh, and that what would happen to these people? What would happen to somebody uh, when the lights turn off and the accolades go away and they have to just simply be Abdullah and Abdullah right uh, uh, by themselves with all, all of this, right? It's also, it's not very healthy for a Muslim, particularly a new Muslim 
to have to constantly live out their life this way. Um, and just, again, this kind of like voyeurism, very voyeuristic. I, I really feel that we need to uh, rethink this love affair that we have with popularity and get back to, you know, sitting, studying, reading, and affirming our faith in a much more wholesome and quiet way uh, versus one that, to be honest, you know, we could, you know, we could put all our chips on some of these people and who knows what will happen. You know, uh, if they decide that, uh, God forbid, right, what would happen if a person left the religion? I, I knew a young man that uh, had gone overseas and studied, he's a brand new Muslim, of course. They uh, immediately shipped him off overseas and he came back and they were calling him Sheikh and this and that. And like within a couple of years, he became very popular. This was a little bit before, you know, it was, it was before the era of TikTok, but still, it was, it, 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 it was definitely in the time of uh, the formation of celebrity imams and whatnot. And this young man, unfortunately, left the religion. Uh, and it left a lot of people feeling high and dry versus like, if somebody leaves the religion, may Allah prevent it, but if Allah, you know, Allah yahdi min yasha, wa yudhillu min yasha, Allah can guide and misguide whoever he wants. And if he decides to misguide somebody, we all don't feel like, oh my God, this is, you know, how could this possibly be? No, it could be because that's what Allah does. So again, I'm really hoping that we can find a way to uh, alleviate ourselves of this need uh, and this thirst for validation uh, based upon popularity. So.